When you think of an animation studio, most people don't immediately think of Sony Pictures Animation. Sure, they've made some pretty good movies, like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Hotel Transylvania, and Into the Spider-Verse, but they're a pretty mixed bag when it comes to quality. In 2017, they released one of the worst cinematic disasters I've ever seen, The Emoji Movie. It comfortably sits as the 50th lowest rated movie on IMDb, but is the hate really deserved? Is it possible that the movie was unfairly judged by a bunch of Discord moderators and Redditors because there are emojis in it? Is this movie a time capsule of the technical age it was made in, or did it age worse than spoiled milk that was left out in the sun? Today, that's what we're gonna find out, because I'll be taking a look at the Emoji Movie. On December 20th, 2016, a teaser trailer was uploaded to YouTube. It ended up getting an incredibly negative reception. This was most likely because the teaser mainly consisted of an emoji standing around and talking. Many people were already on the fence about the premise of the movie being about emojis, and the teaser did nothing to prove the concept could work. Which is probably why the teaser didn't do too well. The movie was slated for a release date of August 4th, 2017. However, this was later changed to July 28th. The official trailer for the Emoji Movie was released on May 16th, 2017. You know, this one was received well, because the comments were automatically set to newest first. You can see the people's opinion on this by setting the comments to top rated. The book is so much better because it doesn't exist. During all that, the YouTuber Jacksons was ironically hyping up the movie. He even went as far as to make a one hour livestream analyzing the trailer frame by frame. The plot of the Emoji Movie is incredibly unique, and is really something I've never seen before. In Textopolis, emojis are supposed to act one way, but our main character, Gene, has multiple emotions. He doesn't fit in well with the rest of society, so he goes on a journey with his friends High Five and Wild Style, I mean Jailbreak, to try to be like everybody else. Wait, did I say this was unique and original? Cause I lied. Obviously, this exact plot has been done many times before, and better. Just look at the Lego movie. It's funny and charming. Two things that the Emoji Movie isn't. So now that I've given a basic description of the plot, time to go through the story beat by beat. Well, this isn't gonna get boring. The movie starts by introducing the world through T.J. Miller's epic narration. Alistair Cray. What you know about rolling down? He explains that every high school student on the planet is sexually attracted to their iPhones because those diddly dang kids nowadays hate words, so emojis are used. Then we're introduced to Textopolis, the city inside your phone where all the emojis live. In this town, emojis can only have one emotion. There we can see some really compelling characters like poop emoji and cat emoji. Then we get to meet our main character, Gene. Gene is a meh emoji, but he can experience other emotions. He goes to work, which is the texting interface of a phone. There we meet Smiler, who I'll call Susan Wajikokaki, because why not? Gene meets High Five for the first time, who can't get in the VIP section because he's no longer being used. Gene gets picked, and of course, he fucks it up by making the wrong face, which also manages to destroy the entire machine, because why not? Now Gene is sad, but after a talk with his parents, he ends up in a meeting with Susan. In there, she talks about removing the dislike button, uh, I mean removing Gene from the phone using evil robots. Gene runs away, meets up with High Five, and then they go to the Loser Lounge. Where the emojis who never get used, hang out. For some reason, the eggplant emoji is here, even though it's fairly popular. But it's whatever, I guess. Gene and High Five complain for a bit, then it's revealed that Gene could be reprogrammed by a hacker. Through more exposition in the boringest way possible, we figure out that the hacker's name is Jailbreak. So after committing identity theft, our heroes find themselves in the wallpaper of the phone, where you can see some not-so-subtle references to Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitch, and Crackle, whatever that is. After Gene and High Five explore for a bit, we're introduced to the side plot of the movie. Gene's parents are now looking for him. These scenes are really just talking, but they're the most enjoyable part of the movie, because now I don't have to watch High Five doing extremely unfunny jokes because he's the comedic relief. Gene's parents go to look for Gene, and Susan is revealed to be following them with bots. <laughs> wow, so intimidating. After that, High Five and Gene find themselves in the piracy app. Wow, really beating around the bush with that one. 
There they meet a bunch of Discord moderators. They also come across spam and a virus, but the most important of the people they meet is Jailbreak, a super cool hacker who could do cool hacker things. Then a bunch of bots show up and our heroes have to flee yet again. You're not allowed to violate the rules in our COS. Yo, that, that, that sounds- do. They go into a portal and come out in the world of Candy Crush. Yeah, for some reason a kid in high school has Candy Crush on his phone. But I guess it's better than having voodoo games, so I'll continue. So Gene's stuck in the Candy Crush game, so they play Candy Crush for a bit. They then make a line with Gene in it, and he fucking dies. <laughs> Oh man. So they line up Gene with some candy, and he unfortunately lives. It cuts back to the emoji phone thing, and we could see that Alex wants to reset his phone. This is because of Gene's mistake earlier. As you can see, the emojis are handling their inevitable deaths very well. After that, the main characters form a plan to get the Dropbox. But first, they need to go through Just Dance. Wait, is that even a mobile app? Huh. So after creating their plan, we have some epic feminism. I wanted to see it because it was my idea. You know, women are always coming up with stuff that men are taking credit for. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games. Because this is what it does, it appeals to like the male fantasy. Wow, Emoji Movie! You're so woke and trendy! After that, we get to see the most dated scene in a movie about emojis. Gene's parents go into YouTube, and we see the most current and modern video on the platform, Pen Pineapple Apple Pen. The parents then put YouTube on autoplay, and the bots all watch cute cat videos, which is also very current and modern. Then it cuts back to the main plot with the Emoji Squad going to Just Dance. High Five is at its worst here, as he's on a sugar rush from Candy Crush. That way, the writers can pretend that scene even remotely mattered and was not just blatant product placement. This is also the same scene with the main joke from the trailer. It's somehow less funny in the movie, as there's not really a punchline and it comes out of nowhere. After that, we get another scene filled with corporate pandering. The emojis make it to Just Dance, and they play Just Dance. In there, it's revealed that Jailbreak is actually the princess emoji. No, not one of those princess emojis. A different one. The creators also attempt to be hip and cool by making a meme. This dance is called the Emoji Pop. Unfortunately, it was a year ahead of its time. Then a bunch of robots show up and ruin everything. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. However, I must admit that these bots do be vibin' though. What is dance? Um, the Emoji Pop? You. Then High Five gets sent to the void. They have an epic sadness moment and they go to save him. But not until after another aerial shot of the wallpaper showcasing Candy Crush, Spotify, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. We cut back to Susan and she summons the Witherstorm from Minecraft Story Mode. That's the entire scene. We cut back to the Shadow Realm from Yu-Gi-Oh! Here we could see a few returning characters from earlier in the movie, like the Just Dance Lady, Spam, and a Discord mod. In there, we could see High Five being depressed about being deleted. The Discord moderator tells him that he doesn't have any real friends, so they won't save him. Then Gene and Jailbreak go to Spotify because Spotify. Back to the trash bin, and they save High Five. Cut back to the parents' story, where they meet up in Instagram, and they have a talk about emoji stuff. There, it's revealed that Gene got the ability to have multiple emotions from his father. Cut back to the gamer squad, and they're just walking. Then the Witherstorm shows up, and they have another epic chase sequence. They run around for a bit, and then get to Dropbox. Don't worry, it can't get in. It's illegal malware, and this app is secure. <laughs> Then they make it to the firewall, and there's a montage of Gene getting hit with fireballs. Jesus. After that, High Five reveals the password is the name of Alex's crush, which is Addy. Yeah, I've kind of been ignoring that whole plotline since it wasn't interesting. To sum it up, during the Emoji's adventure, Alex's phone was constantly opening apps and glitching, which was embarrassing him in front of his crush. It was glitching so much to a point where he's going to a phone store to fix it. 
He probably could have just turned off his phone in class, but that's too hard compared to going out of your way to get your phone repaired. So the emojis make it past the firewall, and they're about to fix Jean. That's when Jean confesses his love to Jailbreak, but she denies him because she's a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. <laughs> Jean then unlocks super depression and goes home, claiming he doesn't need to be reset because of how meh he feels. <laughs> Alex makes it to the phone store to set up the final act. Jailbreak whistles and calls the Twitter bird. Get it? Cause she's a princess? And as we all know, all princesses love birds. Jailbreak and High Five ride on the Twitter bird to get to Gene. Gene turns himself in and is about to be executed when his parents show up. Now that's the worst mistake they're gonna make in their lives. The thing you should do in this situation is to let Gene die. Sure, it may be a little cold-blooded, but our main mission is to survive. But these are emojis, so I don't care. So now the dad's about to be executed too. But before they get deleted, High Five and Jailbreak break into the building. There, they fight the Giga Chad robot and turn it off. Unfortunately for them, Alex is already about to reset his phone. Everyone starts to disappear, and then we see some footage we've seen earlier in the movie, but with a filter and sad music. Oh, how sad. They went on a journey that lasted a few hours and they were such close friends. But just in the nick of time, Gene becomes an animated emoji and saves everyone. They then all do the emoji pop simultaneously, which may or may not fuel my nightmares. Then the humans agree to go to a dance, but nobody cares. The end. So how did people think of a story so generic? The reception of the Emoji Movie was just as expected. Awful. Soon after its release, many YouTube reviewers and critics blasted it with negative reviews. Box office-wise, it made $217.8 million and had a budget of $50 million. The film was projected to make 20 million in its opening weekend, but it only ended up making about 12 million. The Emoji Movie ended up winning Worst Director, Worst Screen Combo, Worst Screenplay, and Worst Picture at the Golden Raspberry Awards. Now that we know the general consensus, it's time for my own opinion. The Emoji Movie is bad. But in all seriousness, making a movie about the little faces you send messages with is simply a bad idea. There's no substance to it, so of course the writers would have to give it a generic story. I'm honestly surprised not a single person at Sony Pictures Animation thought it would be a bad idea to make an entire movie about emojis. The movie itself seems to hop all over the place, and some sections can last as little as 10 seconds. And it doesn't help that there are full scenes that don't accomplish anything. Someone, please, tell me the relevance of the Candy Crush scene, YouTube scene, or the Spotify scene. There are also too many scenes that end with emojis running to another place from robots. There are a few minor differences between chase scenes, but they're all too similar. One could argue that the LEGO Movie also does this, however, the LEGO Movie at least has some variety, and it's actually funny. The Emoji Movie aren't funny! <laughs> Smiler was also a very underwhelming antagonist, as there wasn't really anything to make her interesting. Her main gimmick was just, smile scary, which simply isn't true. It would have been nice if she was a bit less two-dimensional. Here's an idea. What if Smiler also had the ability to have more than one emotion? That way, there could be some scenes where she struggles to keep it together when things get tough. It also gives the audience a reason to be the least bit sympathetic towards the villain, which is always a plus. My biggest question with this film is simple. What's the demographic? Kids today are more interested in Spider-Man XL's a fanfiction to watch this. Teens wouldn't like it because it has a very phone-bad-book-good mentality for the sake of comedy. And it's not good for adults because it's a boring no. generic movie with a boring generic story. The only demographic I could think of are the people reviewing it on the internet because it's bad. Honestly, the entire film just seems kind of unnecessary. So anyways, I'm hyped for the Emoticon movie coming out in 2022! So, it's time for the big question. Was the Emoji Movie really that bad? That's up for debate. I don't often agree with media critics, but this movie clearly wasn't good. But I honestly don't think it deserves to be the 50th most lowest rated movie of all time. 
I think the biggest problem was the boring plot and the blatant pandering to big companies. Stuff like illegal malware in this app is secure makes it clear they didn't remotely care for artistic intent. Then again, it's the Emoji Movie, so it's debatable whether there was any to begin with. But while the movie may be a piece of hot garbage, it's far from the worst thing ever. Even though it's uninspired and uninteresting, it at least looks nice and doesn't depict sexualized children. So that's a plus. I think people judged the Emoji Movie extra harshly because it was made by Sony Pictures, one of the biggest animation companies. If it was made by some guy in his garage, people would be a lot more forgiving. But a movie this blatantly terrible made by such a large-scale company is just sad. At the end of the day, the Emoji Movie was a disaster, but it was a great one. I seriously doubt anyone was hoping for this movie to be successful. People either wanted it to not exist or to fail miserably. And it did. In an era as divided as today, I'm happy we can all agree that the Emoji Movie was a bad idea. The biggest takeaway from this, however, is that Into the Spider-Verse more than makes up for this train wreck. So that's basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed us, this is my very first film review. I might make more of people enjoy this one though. I also took a two week break due to burnout as making nothing but mobile game reviews for six months really messed with my mental state, so expect a bit more variety in my uploads. Anyways, I'll see you in another video.